Welcome back to Deep Learning. So today we want to look into the applications of known operator learning and a particular one that I want to show today is CT reconstruction. So here you see the formal solution to the CT reconstruction problem and this is the so-called filtered back projection or Radon inverse. This is exactly the equation that I referred to earlier that has already been solved in 1917. But as you may know CT scanners have only been realized in 1971. So actually Radon who found this very nice solution has never seen it put to practice. So how did he solve the CT reconstruction problem? Well the CT reconstruction is a projection process and it's essentially a linear system of equations that can be solved and the solution is essentially described by a convolution and a sum. So it's a convolution along the detector direction S and then a back projection over the rotation angle theta. During the whole process we suppress negative values so we kind of also get a nonlinearity into the system. This all can also be expressed in matrix notation. So we know that the projection operations can simply be described as a matrix A that describes how the rays intersect with the volume. And with this matrix you can simply take the volume X, multiply it with A and this gives you the projections that you observe in the scanner. Now getting the reconstruction is you take the projections P and you essentially need some kind of inverse or pseudo inverse of A in order to compute this. And we can see that there is a solution that is very similar to what we've seen in above continuous equation. So we have essentially a pseudo inverse here and that is A transpose times A A transpose inverted times P. And now you could argue that the inverse that you see here in A is actually the filter. So for this particular problem we know that the inverse of A, A transpose will form a convolution. This is nice because we know how to implement convolutions into deep networks, right? Matrix multiplications. So this is what we did. We can map everything into a neural network. We start on the left hand side, we put in the sinogram and all of the projections. We have a convolutional layer that is computing the filtered projections. Then we have a back projection that is a fully connected layer and it's essentially this large matrix A. And then we have the non-negativity constraint. So essentially we can define a neural network that does exactly filtered back projection. Now this is actually not so super interesting because there's nothing to learn. We know all of those weights. And by the way, the matrix A is really huge. So for 3D problems, it can approach up to 65,000 terabytes of memory in floating point position. So you don't want to instantiate this matrix. And the reason why you don't want to do that, it's very sparse. So only a very small fraction of the elements in A are actually connections. So this is very nice for CT reconstruction because then you typically never instantiate A but you compute A and A transpose simply using ray tracers. So this is typically done on the graphics board. Now why are we talking about all of this? Well, we've seen there are cases where CT reconstruction is insufficient and we could essentially do trainable CT reconstruction. But already if you look at the CT book, you already run into the first problems because if you implement by the book and you just want to reconstruct a cylinder that is merely showing the value of 1 within this round area, then you would like to have an image like this one where everything is 1 within the cylinder and outside of the cylinder it's zero. So we're showing this line plot here along the blue line through the original slice image. Now if you just implement 
filtered back projection as you find it in the textbook, you get a reconstruction like this one. And a typical mistake is that you choose the length of the Fourier transform too short, and the other one is that you don't consider the discretization appropriately. Now you can work with this still and fix the problem in the discretization. So what you can do now is we can essentially train the correct filter. So what you would do in a classical CT class is you would run through all the math from the continuous integral to the discrete version in order to figure out the correct filter coefficients. Instead here we showed that by knowing that it takes the form of a convolution we can express our inverse simply as P times the Fourier transform, which is also just a matrix multiplication, right? Then K is a diagonal matrix that holds the spectral weights. And then an inverse Fourier transform that is denoted as F Hermitian here. And then you back project. So we can simply write this up as a set of matrices. And by the way, this would then also define as a network architecture. Now, we can actually optimize now for the correct filter weights. And what we would do is we would solve the associate optimization problem. And that is simply that we want to have the right hand side equal to the left hand side and we choose an L2 loss. You've seen that at numerous occasions in this class. Now if we do that we can also by hand then compute the derivative and if you use the matrix cookbook then you get the following gradient with respect to the layer K. That would be F times A times and then in brackets, A transpose, F Hermitian, our diagonal filter matrix K times the Fourier transform times P minus X, and then times F times P transpose. So if you look at this, you can see that this is actually the reconstruction. This is the forward pass through our network. This is the error that is introduced. So this is our sensitivity that we get at the end of the network if we apply our loss. So we compute the sensitivity and then we back propagate it up to the layer where we actually need it. That would be layer K here. And then we multiply with the activations that we have in this particular layer. And if you remember our lecture on feedforward networks, this is nothing else than the respective layer gradient and we still can reuse the math that we learned in this lecture very much earlier. So actually we don't have to go through the pain of computing this gradient. Our deep learning framework will do it for us. So we can save a lot of time using the backpropagation algorithm. What happens if you do so? Well, of course, after learning, the artifact is gone. So you can remove this artifact. Well, this is kind of an academic example. We also have some more. You can see that you can approximate also fan beam reconstruction with a similar matrix kind of equations. There we have then an additional matrix W. So W is a pointwise weight that is multiplied to each pixel in the input image. And C is now directly our convolutional matrix. So we can describe a fan beam reconstruction formula simply with this equation. And of course, we can produce a resulting network out of this. Now let's look at what happens if we go back to this limited angle tomography problem. So if you have a complete scan, it looks like this. Let's go to a scan that has only 180 degrees of rotation. Here, the minimal set for the scan would be actually 200 degrees. So we are missing 20 degrees of rotation, not as strong as the limited angle problem that I showed in the introduction of known operator learning, but still significant artifact emerges here. Now let's take a pre-training our traditional filter back projection algorithm and adjust the weights and the convolution. If you do so, you get this reconstruction. So you can see that the image quality is dramatically improved. A lot of the artifact is gone. There's still some artifacts on the right hand side, but the image quality is dramatically better. Now you could argue, well, you are again using a black box, but that's not actually true because our weights can be mapped back into the original interpretation because we still have a filtered back projection algorithm. 
And this means we can read out the trained weights from our network and compare it to the state of the art. And if you look here, we initialized with the so-called Parker weights, which is the solution to a short scan. And the idea here is that opposing rays are assigned a weight such that the rays that measure exactly the same line integrals essentially sum up to one. So this is shown on the left hand side. On the right hand side you find the solution that our neural network found in 2016. So this is the data optimal solution. And you see it did significant changes to our Parker weights. Now in 2017 Schäfer et al. published a heuristic how to fix these limited angle artifacts and they suggested ramping up the weight of rays that run through the area where we are missing observations. So they simply increase the weight in order to fix the deterministic mass loss. And if you look what they found, works better in a heuristic, we can see that our neural network found a very similar solution and we can demonstrate that this is data optimal. So you can see a distinct difference on the very left and the very right. So if you look here and if you look here, you can see that in these weights, this goes all the way up here and here. And this is actually the end of the detector. So here and here is the boundary of the detector. Also here and here. So this means we didn't have any change in these areas here and these areas here. And the reason for that is we never had objects in the training data that would fill the entire detector. Hence, we can also not backpropagate gradients here and this is why we essentially have the original initialization still at these positions. That's pretty cool. That's really interpreting networks. That's really understanding what's happening in the training process, right? So can we do more? Yes. There's even other things like so-called variational networks. And this is work by Kobler, Pock, and Hamanek. And they essentially showed that any kind of energy minimization can be mapped into a kind of unrolled problem. So essentially an energy minimization can be solved by gradient descent. So you essentially end up with an optimization problem that you seek to minimize. And if you want to do that efficiently, you could essentially formulate this as a recurrent neural network. And how do we deal with recurrent neural networks? Well, we unroll them. So any kind of energy minimization can be mapped into a feed-forward neural network if you fix the number of iterations. <laughs> this way you can then take an energy minimization like this iterative reconstruction formula here or iterative denoising formula here and map it onto the gradient. And if you do so, you essentially end up with the previous image configuration minus the negative gradient direction and you do that and repeat this step by step. So here we have a special solution because we combine it with our neural network reconstruction and just want to learn an image enhancement step subsequently. So what we do is we take our neural network reconstruction and then hook up on the previous layers this de-streaking or denoising step that is trainable. And it uses compressed sensing theory. So if you want to look into more details here, I recommend taking one of our image reconstruction classes. And if you look into them, you can see that there is this idea of compressing the image in a sparse domain. And here we show that we can actually learn the transform that expresses the image contents in a sparse domain. Meaning that we can also get this new sparsifying transform and interpret it in a traditional signal processing sense. <laughs> Let's look at some results. And here you can see that we, if we take the full scan reference, we get really an artifact free image. Our neural network output with this reconstruction network that I showed earlier kind of is improved, but it still has these streak artifacts that you see on the top right. And on the bottom left, you see the output of a denoising algorithm that is BM3D. So this does denoising, but it still has problems with streaks. 
And you can see that in our variational network on the bottom right, the streaks are quite a bit suppressed. So we really learn a transform based on the ideas of compressed sensing in order to remove those streaks. Very nice neural network that mathematically exactly matches a compressed sensing reconstruction approach. So that's exciting. And by the way, if you think of this energy minimization idea, then you also find the following interpretation. The energy minimization and this unrolling always leads to a resonant because you take the previous configuration minus the negative gradient direction, meaning that it's the previous layer's output plus the new layer's configuration. So this essentially means that our resonant that can also be expressed in this kind of way, they always are resulting of any kind of energy minimization problem. So if you, well, it could also be a maximization. Yeah? We, don't, we don't even have to know whether it's a maximization or a minimization. But generally, if you have a function optimization, then you can always find the solution to this optimization process through a resonant. So you could argue that resonants are also suited to find the optimization strategy for a completely unknown error function. Interesting, isn't it? Well, there's a couple of more things that I want to tell you about these ideas of known operator learning and also more applications where we can apply this and maybe also some ideas how the field of deep learning and machine learning will evolve over the next couple of months and years. So thank you very much for listening and see you in the next and final video. Bye-bye. Thank you.